So today, my name is Nodiana binti Muhammad Kusha Ali. My matrix number is 192097. And today, I'm going to interview my brother, Muhammad Faris, about a product and also the related food law. So, before anything else, let's start. So, first of all, I want to talk about my product. It is a gold coin sweetened creamer. Okay, so before anything else, I want to ask my brother. Okay, um, what do you know about this product? Like, when do we use this? Yeah, obviously, this is a uh, sweetened cream. Uh, when do we use it? Probably drink, uh, when you want to mix drinks, beverages. Yeah, so you're right. So, this sweetened creamer is usually used to make like tea, coffee, to add the creaminess and also the sweetness in our, like when we drink tea, it's sweet, right? So that is what it is used for. Okay, so what else? Mm, let me ask, how do you keep it? You can <laughs> examine the labeling, it's actually in the labeling. How do we keep it? Yes. I think probably we keep it in the refrigerator. <laughs> yeah, like in our house, okay, we use this and also once we open it, we keep it in our refrigerator. To, I think one of the reasons my mom did that is to avoid ants. <laughs> but also it's actually more, we can keep it for a longer time when we put it in the refrigerator. But based on the labeling here, it's stated that we can keep it a cool and dry place. Oh. I think it's before we open the can, we put it outside, right? So that's, all about, that's about how we keep it. Um, another thing. Do you, where do you think it is manufactured from? Uh, over here, it's stated from Selangor, Malaysia. Yeah, so <laughs> it is um, manufactured in Malaysia, which is a local factory. So, okay, I'm talking about what I'm learning for this half of the semester uh, from the course Food Law FST 4609. And this, from what I learned, according to Food Act, remember the book I bought, uh, Food Act 281, and at the part three, Offenses and Evidences, it is stated in one of the clauses that if it is locally manufactured, then the manufacturer can has the right to sales and distribute to whoever and wherever they want. How, okay, how about if it's import, like, for, let's say if it's from Singapore, let's say. So, the person in Malaysia who wants to sell it or distribute it, they have to ask the permission first from the main manufacturer in Singapore. So, they can't sell it? Yeah, they can't sell it simply. They have to take the permission. Okay. So, that is about one of the law that is related. Next on, uh, another another clause that I found from the offenses and evidences based on this product is that it um, it comply clause 14 which is the substances in the sweetened creamer. Okay, so I want you to take a look. I see in the book, I mean I read the book according to the food regulation 1985 so there is a standard in making each product sell in the market standard is like um, a composition of each ingredient like like example for example this they should be what 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 to be able to be called as sweetened creamer okay let me give you <laughs> okay let me explain it more detail okay so the standard of a product to be able to be called a sweetened creamer it should have the ingredient of a sugar mixing with a, a vegetable oil so if you look at the ingredient i want you to take a look at the ingredient okay you can see any vegetable oil uh, yeah That's refined right. palm oil yes refined palm, palm oil is the vegetable oil can you see sugar yeah, sure. So these two combining in the ingredient, 
and it is a standard to call this product as a sweetened creamer. Okay, there's also another rule, the standard to have this product as sweetened creamer, which is it should have milk constitute. Any milk constitute that you've seen here. Yeah? Yes, milk solid is the milk constitutes to be a for this product to be called as sweetened creamer. Okay, so how if FNN didn't comply to this law? Like there is no milk constitute, but it's called sweetened creamer. Do you think what do you think about the um what we call punishment to that? <laughs> Let me tell you, it's actually very simple, simple because it's according to the Food Law Food Act 1985. So if they didn't comply the clause 14 of offenses and evidences, they will have to uh, go into the jail <laughs> for not exceeding 5 years or to fine or both. Okay? So that is one of the law related to this product. Moving on also is um what else okay one thing you will know about can product what is the the packaging can, this is can product right the most um usually seen damage on a can product is uh, what you call that? dented <laughs> okay <laughs> sorry uh. <laughs> yeah it, it hasn't been dented but they still sell it we can also sue that Okay, so that is according to the Food Act uh, 128 also, the Food Law book. And to any person or manufacturer who sells any sealed packages, but when the packages is damaged, so it doesn't provide protection to the product anymore. Okay, so if there is any of these cases, we can sue them. And also the manufacturer or the person who sell will be fined not exceeding 30,000 or jail for 5 years or both so you have to be very, very careful in buying you know how how much is the effect if you buy a dental food dental food can, canned food right yeah it, it has a lot of contamination in it it is dental so that is one of the food, uh, food law related also and the last one I want to talk about is in our Offenses and Evidences Class 15, which is the labeling. I have showed you just now some labeling, right? You have seen the ingredient. You can you also see the nutrition? Yes? Yeah. So, um, one of the main thing is the ingredient because some most of the consumer will look at the ingredient before buying a food. Will you? Sometimes <laughs> no, you don't. <laughs> okay, so uh, in each uh, how we call it? product in each food food product, normally they will have emulsifier, stabilizer. Do you know what is that? Okay. So emulsifier and stabilizer is is usually used when the food has composition of oil and water, fats and water because fats and water will not go together. If you put oil and water, you will see the oil go up, right? So stabilizer and emulsifier is needed in a product that has fats and water to make them stabilize, like emulsify, yeah, so that you won't see the separation. So usually in food labeling, there is a thing called E-code. E-code. E code is used for like normally food coloring, food additives to represent each code represent a thing, a name of the component. For example, um, emulsifier. Like I, you remember what I say, emulsifier, the separation part. So it is usually in between E four hundred to E four hundred ninety nine. So let's example, in milk product, usually the emulsifier used is mono or diglyceride fatty acid. So this emulsifier should have the E code of 417. 
it is very important to see if that particular E code, like that particular E code representing a component, right? To see if that particular component is uh, harmful to our health or not. Because there have been some food additive that is harm to uh, that is harmful to our body, like a uh, very common food coloring that can cause uh, hyperactive in children. There are this kind of food additive. So actually, it should have been put at the e code to make the consumer more aware of what we are eating into our body. In conclusion. Do you see how important food law in our daily product? We use this daily actually, so it's actually very important in promoting a product into the market. Yeah. So throughout my learning of food law, FST 4609, um, I've learned a lot. Also, I read a lot. The book is quite thick. So I'm promoting this to my family for them to create their awareness as well. So. That's all for today. Thank you. Thank you for my brother featuring. <laughs>